Pastor Terry. Yes. Is it possible? Yes. To go through an economic downturn and prosper beyond measure? Yes. Stay tuned to find out more. Hello, I'm Pastor George Pearsons, and this is my wife. This month, 45 years married. Yes, and 47 years together. We met 47 years ago. That's this right, month. that's right. Isn't it fun to do this? It is. Wow. What? And we, we kind of dreamed of some things like yep. this, but it's yep. bigger and better and more wonderful. And look at all the people that I are know, out there. I know, they joined wonderful? us for our wedding anniversary. Ha yes, happy anniversary. Oh, nice. <laughs> we're so glad you're with us today. <laughs> and we're so excited about the things that we're sharing, about the Word of God, prospering in tough times, and the fact that God is our supply chain. Let me remind you, all of the outlines that we're working from here, those are available to you right now on kcm.org. You can go to the website, click onto the picture of Pastor Terry and myself, and you can access not only those outlines, but all the outlines of all the broadcasts that have been, uh, we've been taking notes and providing them. It's amazing. So, what a treasure trove of yeah. information. They're very, you know, I have to say, George is amazing. His outlines, he's so meticulous and so neat and so, so simple in his presentation. Anybody can use these and there's, there's um, great information, but but you can use them to minister, you can use them to study with or to share, we don't care. And we just wanna be a blessing to That's you. Right. So good That's right. job. Thank you, ma'am, thank you. Today, we're talking about, well actually we're answering the question that we started with. Can one go through an economic downturn and prosper beyond measure at the same time? You can even go through an economic crash you can go through an economic upheaval, inside, outside, upside down, total <laughs> famine, yes. where there's nothing to be had, and you can come out of that all the way through it. You can go all the way through it with needs met right. and enough to supply and be a blessing. You can be a blessing carrier That's right. and make a difference. That's right. In fact, you can be so equipped and anointed of God that you can break the famine. Ah. Wherever you go, it you can go. change because you showed up. So we're gonna begin this study on this today and then we're gonna continue into tomorrow on this. But let me read to you once again a quote from Pastor Bill Winston. Mm -hmm. uh, as you're turning this in your- This one's a little different. Uh, what's that? This one's a little different a little than different. what we read yesterday. Um, and as you're turning to Genesis chapter 26, as we begin this, Pastor Bill Winston said, something is coming to the economy. Whatever it may be, if a person is operating in kingdom principles, it will be just like they are in the ark at the time of the flood of Noah. The worse conditions got, the higher Noah rose. The worse things get, the higher kingdom people will rise in prominence in the earth. I believe that. What a great quote from him. That's tremendous. The higher, the worse the conditions got, the higher Noah rose. And he was unaffected. He certainly knew there was a storm. It was more than just a storm. Right. He certainly knew that the circumstances yeah. were drastic, but he was safe and he wasn't, only in a natural ark. This is what's beautiful about the things of God. Yeah. You can build a boat, but if it's not uh, built by God, if it doesn't have the anointing in it, then it's still subject to whatever might come at it. But I suspect that Noah's ark, while wonderful as it may have been, would not have been enough to sustain him all those many months in that boat uh, apart from God's provision, not with what he was facing, but the hand of God. The Bible says the hand of God right. closed the door on it. So Noah did his part. He obeyed God. He built the ark. But it was God's protection that kept him 
above the waters right. through the whole time of the flood. And one of the Bible characters that we study about concerning this is Isaac. Mm -hmm. He did that very, very thing. Look at Genesis 26 in verse one. Uh, in the message translation, I'm reading it from the message translation on this one. There was a famine in the land, as bad as the famine during the time of Abraham. And Isaac went down to Abimelech, king of the Philistines, in Gerar. So before I go further, you wrote some notes off to the side I here, didn't did, you? Very I interesting did. notes. Well, I like what you said in here. Famine includes shortage, mm -hmm. extreme, extreme scarcity, serious economic downturns or a crash, a depression. It doesn't right. matter. Right. Uh, as And of course, what we've been seeing so worldwide is supply chain yeah. just don't have, they're just products aren't there. But Abraham, this says, Abraham, a severe famine in the time of Abraham, mm -hmm. as well as Isaac. But uh, there was even another famine that came in Joseph. So it was Abraham, right. Isaac, and Jacob, and right. Jacob's son was Joseph. Abraham believed God and obeyed him, and God sent him into Egypt, and he was provided for. Isaac, however, he sowed in the time of famine. So he, Abraham believed and obeyed, Isaac obeyed and sowed and mm -hmm. reaped a hundredfold return. Mm -hmm. Jacob uh, didn't face famine in the first part of his life, but he had or, um, his son Joseph went into Egypt and he prepared. He was prepared before the time of famine. He obeyed God and was obedient to be prepared. So we had Abraham who believed, Isaac who sowed, and Joseph, who was prepared, he saved right, before right. the time of famine. And then Jacob was wise enough by the obedience of God yes. to partake of that. Yeah. So here we have believing, sowing, <clears throat> and preparation. Mm -hmm. All of them, all three of all them three. in obedience That's good. to God. That's so he good. can tell you, he tell you, put you somewhere where there's provision. He may have you stay yeah. right where you are and sow and give and watch the harvest. Yeah. He may have you preparing all along for things that are coming. And all three are the wisdom of God and he knows what to do. That's good. He knows what to That's do. That's good. Where famine is concerned. Famine again, economic downturn, severe shortage. The Bible has somewhat to say about how we respond and what we do during these times of economic downturn. And so let me give you these scriptures before we get into what we're talking about concerning Isaac. Uh, in Psalm 37, verses 18 and 19, the Lord knows the days of the upright. Their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. And in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. So I looked up the word satisfied in the Hebrew, and it means to fill to satisfaction, to have enough, to be full, to have plenty of, and to have in excess. The New Living Translation, I like this one. They will not be disgraced in hard times. Even in famine, they will have more than enough. More than enough. Praise See, God. Can, wow. Now, part of that is how you picture it too. Did you know in the Great Depression, mm. I, don't, I forgot the statistics on it exactly, but yeah. there were an enormous number of millionaires, people mm. who became millionaires wow. during wow. the Great Depression. Imagine that. Yeah. So who are you gonna identify with? Right. Who do you see yourself? Do you see yourself in the bread line? Well, praise God for a bread line if you need one. Praise God, that's provision. But do you see yourself in the bread line? Do you see yourself as someone handing out bread in the bread line? Right. Or do you also, are <laughs> yeah. you able to see yourself as the one who's buying all the bread yes. that goes in the bread line? Yep. That wherever you yeah. go, there's abundance and prosperity. Now to, to think that way, you have to, really best to be doing that before you face the, the dark times. Right. But even in the middle of dark times, you still have to continue to practice what you've learned and you have to picture yourself that way, not just in your imagination, but based on the provision yeah. that God has said belongs to us. We think about that. If he meets all my needs, 
then what does that look like? If he meets all my needs mm-hmm. according to his riches and glory, then it's not according to the bank. It's not according yes, to the, the you, economics. Jesus. It's not according to the checking count. It's not according to savings or my mm. 4013B or my IRA or any of this. It's not according to any of that. It's according to his riches and there glory. You and you yeah. think on that and think on that. Yep. And you'll be amazing what picture God paints not only in your mind, but in your spirit, and your faith will attach to it. Another translation of this Psalm 37, uh, they are not put to shame in evil times. In the days of famine, they have abundance. And I like this message translation because it really speaks, uh, especially to what we've seen in stores and empty shelves and all of that. Oh, this is good. In hard times, they'll hold their heads high. When the shelves are bare, they'll be full. Yeah. So that's what that's what the word says about when we go through times like that. Job 5:20, he will save you from death in a time of famine, from the power of the sword in the time of war. You'll be safe from slander and have no fear when destruction comes. You'll laugh at destruction and famine, and wild animals will not terrify you. <laughs> well, there you go. There you go. Mm-hmm. Uh, Psalm 33:18 and 19. But the Lord watches over those who fear him. Those who rely on his unfailing love, they, he rescues them from death and keeps them alive in times of famine. And then uh, this, uh, this Psalm 37, day by day, the Lord takes care of the innocent. Uh, they will receive an inheritance that lasts forever. They will not be disgraced in hard times, even in fact, well, I read that already, didn't I? They'll have more, they will have more than enough. And then the Hebrew of this, Terry, it says, he will supply until no more is needed. You know, one of the things too is we have to, in trusting the Lord, it frankly quite often doesn't come or show up in the way maybe that we pictured it or the way that we thought, the way that we expected it, but he does make a way. Mm -hmm. And that's, we just, through faith and patience, we inherit those promises. Yep. So Genesis 26, uh, starting in verse two. I'll read this from my my King James first. Um, The Lord appeared unto him, Isaac, and said, go not down to Egypt. Dwell in the land that I shall tell you of. Verse three, sojourn in this land and I will be with you. I will bless you for unto you and unto your seed. I will give you all these countries and I will perform the oath which I swore unto Abraham, Abraham, thy father. And then it says in verse six, Isaac dwelt in Gerar or Isaac stayed in Gerar. Um, The New Living Translation of that verses two and three. The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, do not go to Egypt but do as I tell you. Hmm. Live here as a foreigner in this land, and I will be with you, and I will bless you. I hereby confirm that I will give all these lands to you and to your descendants, just as I solemnly promised Abraham your father. And then in the New Living Translation of verse six, it says, so Isaac stayed. That's the important thing. Yeah. God told Abraham to go to Egypt, but he had a Isaac stay in the land. Yeah. So yeah. it's important to hear and don't predict for yourself. Don't assume. Boy, assuming can get you in a lot of trouble. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of times people blame God for their own assumptions. Right. So it's important to stay in tune, stay in the Word. Going to the Word helps us discern and understand with clarity the, the inner witness and voice of the Holy Spirit that's within yes. so we can recognize his instructions. Can I just want to add something here mm-hmm. for people as we're talking mm-hmm. about being led? <clears throat> we understand that 1 John 2, 20, you have an unction from the Holy One. Yes. And you don't need that someone should teach you or you don't need that someone, a person come tell you what to do. But you have an unction, you have a witness. And then I believe it's Colossians, it says, let peace be your umpire. What does that mean? Then just write down on the inside, is it a red light, a green light, a yellow light, a stop, a go, a caution? <laughs> and, and looking down on the inside, praying in other tongues, that's why we encourage you to pray in other tongues. You can call our prayer line and we'll pray with you. 
uh, about receiving that infilling of the Holy Spirit, that that evidence of speaking with other tongues, because developing and being able to listen, sometimes you have to sit on it a while. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you put it before the Lord. Sometimes you just hold things there and then let Him guide you and direct you, but you recognize His voice by what you've read and seen in the Word, because if it disagrees with this, yeah. then it's not God. Yeah. And that's, yeah. that's a nutshell how we can be led. He was blessed where he was supposed to be. And that's, that's an issue that people yeah. face when they're moving from one place to another in the country or even the world. Where's your blessing? Mm -hmm. Where's the Lord telling you to go? Yeah. Where's and where's your church? Yeah, right. <laughs> what church are you being called to? That is so crucial and so important because there's a pastor out there that has a word for you every Sunday mm -hmm. that you need to be connected with. Yeah, and if you're in the wrong church, then the word you needed to hear was somewhere else. And it's not always the place that we're the most comfortable or that suits our fancy because going to church isn't about just making you happy or comfortable, but it's also about the Lord developing you. Right, it's right, about right. Him challenging you. It's about things that aren't always the easiest and sometimes the people are the most difficult. Why? Because He wants to develop you in that place so that you are better equipped to deal with right. the real issues, the real problems that are in the world. And a lot of times people run because they're just something they don't like so much and they miss God right. in doing so. So that's one of the keys of going through a time of famine is to be obedient to the Lord and to be exactly, you, like I tell our congregation, I believe you're in the right place at the right time with the right people doing the right thing. In the right way. In the right way. <laughs> <laughs> and so he was doing that, Isaiah 119. Uh, he was obeying this scripture, if you're willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Well, that leads us into then Isaac thriving in that land. Can I pass, oh, go back on that yeah, just a second? Go ahead. Willing and obedient. Mm -hmm. You know, there are times we've been obedient and, and sometimes we've been obedient first and willing caught up. But sometimes obedience and you just not willing and you fuss and complain and gripe and, and fume about it and not ever get happy or joyful about it. That can cost you. That can cost you a lot. In fact, in Deuteronomy 28, it says, because you didn't rejoice in the Lord, mm -hmm. the curse came on you. Yeah. So we want to keep the door to the curse closed in every way right, possible. Right. And so to be willing and obedient. And the Lord will help you with it. Yes. Yep. Okay. Genesis 26. Back now, here he's obeyed mm -hmm. and stayed. Ooh, that rhymes. Obeyed he and obeyed. Stayed and stayed where he was supposed to be. And the result of that, look at this, in verses 12 through 14, then Isaac sowed in that land and he reaped in the same year. What year was that? That was the year of famine. Yeah. But he reaped a hundredfold and it said, and the Lord blessed him. So get this, yeah. the hundredfold, the Lord didn't even count that as the blessing. Yeah. <laughs> he said he, <laughs> so he, he, was, yeah. he reaped a hundredfold and the Lord blessed him. Yeah. So in, while this harvest is coming up, there's more blessing popping up elsewhere. We don't know what all that was, but well, it does go on to say more. So the, mm -hmm. the, while he reaped mm -hmm. out of that field, it does go on to say what else happened. Well, it said that he, he blessed him and of course, the word blessed means to empower, to prosper. Those were the first words that man ever heard in Genesis 1, talking about the blessing being fruitful, multiplying, replenishing the earth, subduing it, having dominion over it. And then the man began to prosper. Wow. And he continued prospering. So it was a process. Yeah. Prosperity began. Yeah but it just it kept just increasing. Until he became very prosperous. I like that progression. That's a great progression. <laughs> he began to prosper. He continued prospering in the famine, mind you, and he became very prosperous for he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and a great number of servants. And the Philistines envied him. There comes the persecution. There's the persecution. Jesus said that the hundredfold return that comes with persecution. 
Mm-hmm. So there's yeah. the persecution. Yeah. The Philistines yeah. envied him. Verse 13 in the New Living, he became a very rich man and his wealth continued to grow. The Hebrew, the man was great. He kept going on and was great until he became exceeding great. So you know, there's that process. Yeah, a lot of people want things to happen all at once. Yeah. We're supposed to be really grateful for even... Well, first of all, be grateful for the promise before you even see it. Yes. But then the the little breakthroughs, the little things that happen, and and then that gives God more room to work with. And a lot of times, George, I believe it's not God's ability to get it to us, as uh, but it's our capacity. Oh, there you go. Our capacity yep, to our receive. Our capacity to receive. You, you, mm-hmm. Growing spiritually is a lot like growing physically. You know, can you watch your child grow? Mm, no, but you look back and go, wow, look at the growth. Yeah, yeah. We grow spiritually in our capacity to yes. believe more, our oh, capacity you, to receive more, yeah. our capacity to manage and handle and distribute more. Yeah. Yeah. And that comes through willingness and obedience. In verse 13 in the King James, he waxed great. Now we don't use that word very often, he waxed great. I like that word. But in the Hebrew it means he increased, he advanced, he was promoted, he exceeded, and he towered. Wow, that's He good. became the world's richest man. Yeah, he became, it's mm-hmm. all about that yep. wax. It was a continual, continual process, yep. and uh, that's a great and the, word. And this is interesting, the normal yield in Gerar was no more than 25 fold even during the most fertile time. So here's a famine and he's getting a hundred fold return. That is supernatural miracle grow. That is what God does in our lives. Proverbs 10, 22, the blessing of the Lord, it makes rich and he adds no sorrow with it. So God's covenant people prosper in spite of the economic times. The conditions were the same, he got different results. But he was in the world, but certainly not of it. And I'll finish this with a quote from Gloria Copeland. It doesn't matter what is happening in the world. It matters what is happening on the inside of us with the word. You know, he said here, George, that his his house, he grew so big that the king became jealous. That means it wasn't just Isaac sitting there getting rich and fat and sassy, but rather his whole household. Everybody connected to him Mm -hmm. was blessed. And all those people in the the Phyllis, the um, Gerar, they were all blessed as well. And they didn't find that out till they they kicked him out. And when Mm -hmm. they kicked him out, the famine returned. So so when they stayed connected to him, well, great, so stay tuned. Yeah. Yeah. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, right now, we lift up every person who is watching us. And Lord, you are renewing our minds. You are changing our thinking. And we are seeing that we can prosper in the most difficult of times. That's your will. That's your desire. That is your promise. And we stand on it. We believe it. And we boldly take hold of the prosperity that is ours during this time. Every bill paid, every need supplied, even right now, debts being canceled and wiped out. Lord, we thank you that you are the great supply chain. And that your source never dries up. It's never empty and it's never, never in a shortage. Lord, we thank you for that. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 I'm excited about being able to share this, Terry, with the people because this is so big in my heart. You don't have to live in a place of lack. You don't have to live in that place of famine. Even though it's going on around you, you, you will change your neighborhood. So, with that said, Stay with us, and Pastor Terry and I will be right Right back. back. How are all the shelves empty? Drive two hours away for baby formula? How are we gonna afford the gas? It's time to get your eyes off your limited resources and get your faith on the source of your unlimited supply. Get the God is my source package by Gloria Copeland and Pastor George Pearsons and find out how God provides everything you need. In fact, 
God not only wants to meet your needs, He wants you living in the abundance of His blessing. Use the study guide to follow along with the daily audio lessons and take notes. Track your faith goals in the mini book and keep it with you as a powerful pocket-sized scripture reference. Immerse yourself in 70 scriptures about God as your provider. You're a member of the family of God and your heavenly Father has good gifts for you. Renew your mind by the Word of God until you are fully persuaded that God is your source. Request your free God is My Source package from Kenneth Copeland Ministries at kcm.org slash TV special or when you call 800-600-7395. You can thrive in every situation because Jesus is your source and the Word of God is your supply. This free offer is good for 60 days. Outside the U.S., shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. I'm so excited about being able to provide this God is my source package. It is so crucial for the time that we live in. And I tell you what, you need to get this down on the inside. I mean, it's an excellent resource for every believer. Mm -hmm. And and I really, today, I wanna encourage you, go through this teaching, the study notes, the mini book that we did, do it together as a family. You know, teach your children this. We did this with our kids growing up. We did, we taught them to tithe. We taught them to give. We taught them to believe God. We taught them to use their faith. The Lord would give us little strategies and plans and how to teach them, whether they were really small or as teenagers, you know, and showed us sometimes he would uh, tell us that we were the the resource to use to provide for them. Other times they we told them, now you use your faith and we'll agree with you and we'll just watch God sure. do it. But he always yeah. showed us the way yep. and going through these kind of things together. That's why having audio and video yes. is so helpful. It's you so important get, for us to just either one. immerse Immerse in the Word of God, especially if you're struggling financially right now. Just get totally immersed in this Word and you will see God move in your life. If you need prayer for anything, call KCM's prayer line. Uh, We can tell you that prayer is a priority here at KCM. Until tomorrow, remember this, God God loves loves you, you, we we love love you, you, and Jesus Jesus is Lord. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Watch the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast free on kcm.org or KCM's Roku channel. If you would like a free copy of the broadcast to put into your faith library, you can download it on kcm.org or request it on DVD or CD. Keep your heart full of the Word of God and continue to grow in faith. Every believer has a voice, and it is the voice of victory. The Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast study notes will help you dive deeper into these powerful word-based teachings. Get all five days of notes at one time. Use them during the week for your personal study time. Download them free at kcm.org slash notes. Create a special family devotional time to follow along with the notes as you watch the broadcast. Study the scriptures with your children and begin instilling God's word now. Use these notes to build your faith library and build up a heritage of faith.